Sonatine is an unconventional Yakuza film and that its tone is that of boredom. It entertains the idea that not all mobsters are as charismatic or gritty as the movies portray them. Perhaps they're just simple people who sometimes shoot each other over turf wars, approaching their jobs with the same weariness of a desk clerk. When violence does break out in this Japanese gang, it's met more with a sigh than a scream. Takeshi Kitano sells this somberness with his stellar direction, on-point writing, and understated performance. I could never take my eyes off him as Yakuza enforcer Murakawa, the way he approaches every situation with a peculiar passivity. Nothing astounds this man in his line of work, even when being ambushed at a bar with guns blazing. People die on both sides, and that's just part of the game, he most likely reasons. Death has become so common to him that even drowning one of his enemies holds no significant satisfaction. He's only slightly interested in seeing exactly how long it takes for his victim to die when being forced underwater, more out of dull curiosity than disturbed passion. The only moments when Murakawa seems to be happy or enjoying himself come in small doses when his men establish a headquarters at a beach house after their last place was bombed during a mission of allegiance. With nothing much to do on the beach, Murakawa entertains himself and his men with goofy pranks and childish games. He delights more in watching his associates fall into holes in the sand than shooting his enemies. When assembling paper dolls to use in mini wrestling matches, he is smiling and laughing. When he lays to waste an entire room of mobsters with an automatic weapon, he is stone-faced and not the least bit aroused or excited by the situation. Later in the picture, Murakawa rescues the beautiful Miyuki from being raped. Despite Miyuki being genuinely attracted to the harsh lifestyle of gangsters, Murakawa is unfazed by her interest in him, and no passion is restored to his life through their meeting. Nothing comes from their relationship besides trading smiles over beer and games on the beach. Even when Murakawa lets Miyuki try firing his automatic weapon, he is utterly unamused by the sight of a beautiful woman firing a gun. Kitano's script is devoid of witty dialogue and profound character passages, favoring a more believable plot of gangsters grown weary. Most of the time we spend with the gangsters is spent staring off into space amid drinks and cigarettes, desperately trying to have fun. They entertain a game of Russian roulette where Murakawa isn't the least bit tense, either out of his tiredness for violence or knowing that he secretly didn't load any bullets. When night falls, the Yakuza either share drinks while they dance or have a game of war with fireworks. Their moments are serene and sweet, a stark contrast to the sporadic graphic violence that occurs quickly, bloodily, and of a casual nature. Sonatine was a failure in Japan, and the studio was reluctant to pursue an international release as they believed it to be too Japanese for international audiences. But when screened at film festivals, the film's popularity grew, and Kitano became an iconic figure of Japanese cinema. The film received numerous awards, including the Japanese Academy Award for Music, thanks to composer Joe Hisaishi, better known for his scores on such animated pictures as My Neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away. The title of Sonatine refers to the musical term Sonatina, meaning a little sonata. Kitano chose this title as he recalls after learning the piano is when the learner must decide what style of piano they wish to play. This applies to Murakawa as a Yakuza that has mastered the art of torture, fistfights, and gunning down uncooperative people. He doesn't want to go anywhere specific with his life at this point. His dreams are now that of of death. There is no fear of the end, however, as he waits for it with a cigarette in hand and no expression on his face. Kitano says far more about his character and the nihilistic nature of violence by just saying nothing, leaving the audience to ponder what is going through that tired head of his before a bullet reaches it first. 